New Wave Community Media. It's just J Mike. Hey, Corey. It's not my name. Oh, well, 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 look who it is. Somebody we haven't spoken to for a while. Yeah, I'm, I haven't been here in a long time. <laughs> for some people, also long-time listeners, um, if you guys don't recognize this voice, it's because it has probably changed. <laughs> but this is Aaron, Corey and I's son. So today's special guest is Aaron. It's not been that long. My voice didn't change that much. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it did, so... Uh, I think a lot of people will agree. <laughs> but I wanted to say thank you for joining us today because I know that you have a very, very busy schedule, especially right now during summer that you don't have school. So I wanted to say thank you for coming out of your room and joining us <laughs> for this special episode of Everything But Perfect Father Edition. Yeah, you know, very busy, man. <laughs> Wake up, eat, play, do my homework. Play more. Uh-huh. Don't worry. I, st- I still go outside sometimes. <laughs> but, <laughs> what kind of, so what kind of homework you got now? Just English homework. Oh, nice. Nice. And did you want to, would you like to share <clears throat> what grade you're just finished and what you're going into? Uh, I just finished freshman year and I'm going to sophomore year now. Nice. Nice. So how did you like your first freshman year? Um, I see it was good. You know, like. It wasn't bad. It wasn't like that challenging, but I still feel it was a pretty good year, you know? Nice, nice, nice. So I wanted to say on the other thing too, I wanted to kind of let people know, like obviously Father's Day just, well, we're recording before Father's Day, but by the time this air, Father's Day has passed. So this step aside, they want to do something special with our son, Aaron. Corey is here. She's a little in the background today, not feeling 100%, but she'll jump in every once in a while. Right, babe? Yes, my lord. (laughs) But yeah. So, let's get into it, Pops. I know last time we, uh, we forget what we were talking about, but I wanted to talk to you about I guess, parenting in a way and kind of see it from your point of view. Um, because as parents, we kind of do our best. We do what we think is the best for for our, for, for the family, for, for our kids. And I just wanted to know and actually ask the question, do you think we're doing a good job? I'd, I'd say you're definitely doing good at parenting because I'll hear stories of like, like not good parenting and I'll like feel grateful that like, your parenting style isn't like like theirs because I hear a lot about like narcissistic parents and like I feel sad for it but like at least you're not like that so wow so you actually have heard of like your friends have told you about stuff like that um or you've heard stories like online like where have you heard this from I've heard just like about stories online wow that's pretty crazy and see that's and that's the thing like I feel that that's the important thing and it feels good to hear that from you because I feel sometimes we don't ask our kids these type of questions, right? But And we always question ourselves as parents, like, are we doing a good job? Like, how are we doing and stuff like that, right? But we have a source right in front of us that could answer those questions. So, And um, I think those are the conversations that us as parents should start having with our kids because it's make it grows the relationship. It, you know, it opens up a conversation between parents and kids, which especially in the teenage years. I know it changes a lot for the kids and the parents because there's so much going on with with kids nowadays. But, you know, having these conversations are important. Um, I know, Aaron, sometimes we kind of go into a tangent and it becomes like a lesson. (laughs) How do you, what what do you, what's your thoughts about the lessons we give you? I mean, at the moment of time that you're giving the lessons, I'm just like, like, I know how to say in a nice oh no, just, not in me way. Yeah, just say because I feel that we're we're pretty comfortable that you know we're not going to feel offended. So feel free to express yourself. I mean, of course, no one wants to like hear a lesson. So like, 
obviously I'll be like, okay, but like after the lesson, I'll, I'll think about it and I'll actually say, you know, he actually has a point. So like, <laughs> just, yeah, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Because I think that's, that's, that's a big thing that like, as like as a parent, like I feel, man, like I do question that. Like, is what I'm saying resonating with you? Do you understand? And sometimes I feel that maybe you don't understand because maybe the topic you haven't experienced it or some or whatever the situation is, but that doesn't mean that you don't eventually will go to, through it and actually remember those lessons. Yeah. I, I feel I definitely remember the lessons because like what you like actually tell me is like pretty important. Like, like I don't know how to say, but like, I guess it's just like, um, I don't know. Um, was it called um it, something like advice oh, that's right. important advice i'll hopefully use in the future so i'm just like grateful you give me like lessons like that because like i'll know i'll need it in the future mm-hmm. for like if i'm ever struggling oh, yeah for sure and i want to say that like i want you i want and that's why it's important to create these relationships because I want you to feel comfortable to coming to to myself, to mom, for ha- and having these conversations because if you're ever in that situation and trouble, you know we we want to be there to to help you, no questions asked, and just help you through it, you know. Because I think I think one of these was one of the lessons I told you a few weeks ago. Like, you know, obviously, if you ask a device from one of your peers, more than likely they haven't experienced that. But if you ask your parents, who we have experienced that, we can give you better advice. So. That's, yeah. that's a lesson right there and you're giving me the look already <laughs> but um you know but i do want to get into this though because i feel that one of the things that me as a father that i look back is kind of thinking back like how i was raised you know and it's it's different you know we were raised in a different generation um different parents different cultures and just completely different but i always remember like the good things. And I think that was one of the things too. Like I remember having conversation with my father and grandfather and, you know, it wasn't like every day or anything, but like, I do remember, remember them. I think that's important. And trying to create that with you, it's one thing that I've been wanting to do. So I'm glad that it's coming together and it's working. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I say that's nice to hear. And I know it's funny because I know I told you this before, how it's interesting how you've been part part of my life, but I've been the part of what? No, wait, how does it go? There's a quote. And I completely messed that one up. Um, as a quote, it's just like, it's interesting how you've been only, you've been part of my life, but I've been part of your whole life. Does that make sense? I mean, you, still, you might have worded it wrong. <laughs> But, um, but, but what I was trying to say with that, where I was going with this is that, you know, I feel that obviously I, before you were born, I had my own life. And what's one thing that, that you have in your mind or have questions about like my childhood or even like my, my younger years before we had you, do you ever think about like how we were before? Yeah, I definitely do. I definitely think about stuff like that, like all the time, like how did, how is my dad like? before I was born like I think about like people people I know how was life for them before I was there like how did my uncle feel before like I was alive or how did my what did my mom like think about before I was alive before she wanted kids Mm. and stuff like that I think I think it's fascinating to think about like stuff that's happened before me that would never that I would never experience in my life, but at least I would hear stories about it. Well, here's a perfect uh, opportunity. What's the question you have for me that you would want to know? Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like during your childhood, did you ever think about the future? And like, did you ever think about how would you, would you want to be a parent or how would you parent? Ooh, I think I at when I was younger, I didn't think how I would parent. I think it was more about what I what I wanted, like what type of example I wanted to be was more important to me, not like the way I was doing it. At least at that time, 
Um, I think that's that's important. Um, the other part about being a parent, I and it was weird because like yeah, I, I did want kids. It's funny because ironically, I wanted like three kids because I came from a three kid household. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I want three kids too. But then, you know, once you kind of get older, you start having kids. You actually start realizing how mm-hmm. you know like, expensive and the responsibilities and kind of change mindsets. But um, but yeah, that you know, I did know that I wanted to be a parent, but. As far as like the future, it's kind of interesting you mentioned that because that's one of the conversations I have with with your mom uh, on our podcast too about it, it's interesting how when I was younger, I did think about the future, but I didn't really think too that far ahead of it. You know, so it's like, oh yeah, like it's funny because I told your mom this too and it's back then it's very hard to like even admit it sometimes, but I didn't really have like a high ceiling for myself, you know. Like I thought that if I had a you know a, an apartment a nice apartment that was good enough I never really thought about getting a house and things like that you know so when I was younger I did have that t- different mindset obviously as I got older and matured and it changed and I think that's the important thing because as you get older a lot of things changes and especially your mindset so I think once that switched then you know things change but yeah when I was younger I didn't really think too much about the future. <laughs> Unfortunately, I wish I had. <laughs> now that I think about it, you didn't think about doing anything like buying Bitcoin when it costed a penny. <laughs> no, I wish. I don't. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I I read an article not that long ago that I guess a pizza, uh, some guy ordered a pizza and they didn't have cash, so they they actually bought it through Bitcoin, and he ended up like buying a pizza for thirty seven Bitcoin when it was really, really cheap, and apparently like. Now that would have been worth like, I don't know, like $15 million or something like that. So it's kind of ridiculous to think that. But no, even like back then, I don't ever remember hearing about Bitcoin. That's the thing that kind of sucks because like it came out when I think I was like in college, but I never really heard about it. So I never really had a chance to to invest in it, which I think that's that's a good, another lesson. You got to start looking what's investing for your future. But no, unfortunately I did not. I wish I had. <laughs> You didn't think it could help you when you became a parent? Maybe on the off chance, it, well, back then, everyone thought it would never become rich, but maybe you could have been different. I wish I had that mindset back then. Then, yeah, it would have been way different. But I think that's kind of an important thing to think about because at that time, I didn't think about that, right? But now that at, now that I am a parent, I look back of all these opportunities that I miss. I'm like, all right, well, hopefully I'm teaching you uh, certain things so that you have a wider range of um, like a uh, a wider vision, a bigger vision, I should say, and actually go for things like that whenever you come across. Because every year there's going to be like new things coming up and who knows what if there's a new Bitcoin or something completely different for you and your generation. Don't be afraid to jump into it and invest. Yeah, yeah I'll be looking for weird currencies when I become a parent. <laughs> when you become a parent before? Well, actually, I don't know if I want to become a parent. That's actually uh, brings up a good good point. Um, I think that's one of the questions that we've kind of talked about it, not too much, but, um, you know, I, I, that's one of the things that I read that the younger generations are actually thinking not be having kids. And, and since you're a Younger generation, I think your generation Z, Z, huh? Yeah, Gen Z. So, why do you think the youth don't want to have kids anymore? Or more and more people are opting out not having kids? Should I say from like a generalized worldview or from like strict parenting view? Uh, both. Both. I think worldview is because it's like the world's like. Uh, maybe just like economy, like inflation and stuff. I think that's really basically like 90% of it. But from a parenting view, I feel like, like I find it weird. Maybe because like, I feel like Gen Z would think they would be better parents. So you would think they want to have more kids to be like a better parent. Or is that millennials? I don't remember, that- but... But yeah, because I feel like Gen Z could be good parents if they just like tried hard enough. But yeah, because of the world and stuff, 
people just don't want kids. So you're saying that people or younger generation are like, well, the world's kind of messed up. Why bring new life into it? Exactly. Wow. You know, and that's very interesting because I don't, like, even you, it, like, sorry, you speaking right now, like, I really didn't think about those things at your age, you know? So I think that's kind of, that's very interesting how, like, the different generations have a different, you know, mentality on things and look at things in the bigger picture, which I think is good for our generation or for the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think about millennials? When when I say millennials, what comes to your mind? Gen Z making fun of them. Oh, my. In what way? I want to know. Um, I don't know if you're, you've been on TikTok, but like there's these like people who like make jokes about them. I mean, like they're like odd hum- humor. Like, do you get some of that humor? What? Uh, that's because I'm raised by millennials. <laughs> What's some other ones you've seen or that, that you get? Like, like the humor from you? Yeah. From millennials? Actually, or when Gen Z are making fun of fun of us, according to to your generation, uh, maybe like absurd humor, like absurdist. You, I think it's called, just like random, like weird stuff. Hmm. And you guys make fun of that. I mean, because you do it differently. <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I do it differently. <laughs> yeah, but. It's funny that you're on that side of TikTok where they make fun of millennials and I'm on the side of TikTok where they make fun of Gen Z for trying to be like millennials. It's interesting. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because we all know the best generation is millennials. But, you know, I mean, yeah. All right, so let me ask you this very important question because I want to hear it from a Gen Z. Is it true that if you look at, at somebody's socks and they have no show or low socks that means that they're millennials what <laughs> there i guess i guess we're on we are down on different side of tiktok <laughs> i don't know i don't know what you're you're watching but i've never heard of it though oh, okay all right never mind that uh well there it, it, it's very interesting how the different different generation is so what's one of the things that so let's go back to kind of what you were saying about the economy and stuff like that. Like why kid, why a Gen Z doesn't want to bring kids into this world. Like where do you feel that you're learning that? Are you learning that in school? Are you learning from on your own? Like where do you feel you're getting that information? I mean, I feel like it's more on my own, you know, because like stuff about like the war on like Palestine and like what's happening on the Congo and what happened to Russia, Russia and Ukraine people are like seeing like tragedies of the world and they think I don't want to live here so why would I make make someone else else live here so um, I think that's just it really because like Sorry. like di- like dictators and stuff All right but you're you're getting this information on your own are you learning this in school I mean some it felt like like said dictators and like wars uh, yeah because I had to like research news articles for like one of my classes and well actually i didn't actually research an article about war but when i was searching for articles there's a lot of stuff about war so it's really where like really where i got it oh wow cool and do you um do you share that point of view where you don't you do you feel that as of right now you wouldn't want to have kids in the future yeah that's yeah i agree but but it's not because of that really I really just don't want kids because, like, that seems a lot of effort. <laughs> like, and I don't know, I don't know if I if I would raise them right because, like, because it's like hard. Like, um, it seems hard to like um, discipline because, like, I see like kids doing bad stuff, and like, and I'm like, I wouldn't want my kid doing those bad stuff. But like, what well, if I try to like teach them that and they just don't care and they just completely ignore me? So. That's really why I don't want kids. Well, and at the same time, <laughs> and at the same time, I know like you're still rel- you're really young still, so that's good that you're not thinking. You know, I'm not really thinking about that as well. Um, but yeah, that's 
but it's, it's very forward thinking too that that you think about things because like i said me at your age yeah there's no way that i was thinking that far ahead and things like that so i applaud the the younger generation because we're better nah, no no <laughs> definitely not that they are just more informed yes i would agree that i feel that the younger generations are more informed but i also do feel that that's that's why one of the big reasons that the younger generation isn't more informed is because we, our generation, sometimes we felt like we we weren't giving that support. So I think that's that's the other part that we're trying to support the younger generation to do more to have to to create a better world. Because I feel that our generation tried, but we didn't get the support from our parents for different reasons. You know whether they're out of form, they weren't sure how to support. But then we learn how to do that. So when you guys are doing it, that's what we're here for. I mean, I thought it just because we had more internet access than you. <laughs> and if, you know, I think that's the other thing, too, is that you're at that stage where you might not see it right now. But believe me, in 20 years, you're going to remember this conversation. And it's going to be on, 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 on the platform. So we're going to be able to <laughs> listen back to it. <laughs> Like, remember that? Yeah. What'd you say? Oh. <laughs> Was that a, a Gen Z swing? I mean, sort of. It's more like Ave, but I guess Ave could, is just called Gen Z slang now. Real? Yeah. So slang is A-V? Wait, say that again? A-A-V. Wow. Okay. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's actually abbreviation. It's just African American vernacular English. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That really did catch me off guard. Than I that I never thought about that. But huh. what's other another Gen Z thing? That's do you think it's a big difference from Gen Z to millennials? Um. Wait. Say that again. What do you think is another uh, like a big difference between? Gen Z and millennial, probably humor again. Humor, no age gap. Age gap. <laughs> well, yeah, but let's go back to humor. What? Why do you think we have different types of humor? <laughs> um, because you were like, because you were raised in like early internet and stuff. So like, you had stuff like AOL and stuff. <laughs> but we were raising like. Oh, I guess latest internet. Wow. So we have other stuff like Twitter and Instagram, like TikTok and stuff. Mm-hmm. That has unlimited like jokes and things that you can look up that's funny. Yeah, you could say that. Where we would just say the same jokes over and over again. I guess. <laughs> Interesting. So do you have any questions for me or you or something you would like to know about me that you to think about since last time I asked. Um, have you per chance heard about like skibbity? <laughs> <laughs> I think finally after you explained it to me for I want to say the fifth or seventh time, I, I understood it. Which I understand it, but I still don't get the funny of it. That's my point about like Gen Z and millennial humor. Maybe you hear this kid? Yeah. <laughs> of course, like, I don't want to know that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, though. Brain raw humor. <laughs> but that, but that's, that is a cool thing, though. I do feel that since you guys are more informed, I do feel that you guys are, in a way, sometimes better equipped to, like, handle certain things and to problem solve. Um, so, you know, keep going. So tell me, what's one of your goals for next uh, next school year? Uh, I got to lock in. You got to lock in? Yeah, specifically on English. That's just my biggest problem right now for school is just English. Mm. I didn't think it'd be like, I thought it was going to be easier. Mm. But that's just because I'm brain rot. <laughs> like, you're also taking honors English, which tends to be a little bit more difficult than than regular so 
give yourself a little bit of credit. But yeah, and you're right. If you feel that you need to work a little bit harder to raise your grade, you go for it. But it's also based on what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. Yeah. But do you welcome that challenge? But do you welcome the challenge? Like when something's a little bit harder. So if you said, Oh, I thought English was going to be easy, but you find it a little challenging. Does that motivate you a little bit more? I might guess a little, but what just motivates me is not failing. Like, or no, my motivation is hoping I don't fail stuff, you know? But one of the things, though, is you shouldn't hope. You should just know that you're not going to fail. Yeah. Change that mindset soon. No. <laughs> it's also a because when you fail, you learn. Yeah. And then you will make sure that that doesn't occur again. So you can't really, you know, because we're not perfect. So here's our lesson for you. Lesson E? Yeah. So it's okay to fail, right? You're not going to set out yourself to fail. But if it happens and you've given that 110%, then find the lesson and then move on. Yeah. Okay. So parenting. Right. Parenting. Exactly. <laughs> so overall, as your father, would you how would you rate my parenting from zero to ten? Maybe maybe like like an eight. An eight. I've never been good at rating from one to ten. <laughs> what do you prefer the rating? Letters. A B C D E F. Well, or A B C D F. <laughs> well not really. <laughs> I just don't like rating. Okay, well, we won't rate, we won't take that rating into into consideration. But I do want to say though, um, you know, it does it does kind of make me happy to hear that because you know, like I said earlier, like as parents, as a father, like we always wonder that. But asking you and hearing it, it kind of helps us as parents knowing that we are on the right path and we are teaching you the right things because you know you have been proving and you know us. You've been doing a lot of good work and you, you've been a really great kid and and we want to thank you for being that. But, um, you know, but continue doing it, you know, and and like mom said, like, don't worry about failing. It's all about learning from your failures because, yeah, we're and then also believing in yourself as well. So knowing that you can do it. Yeah. And Corey's in the background, but she also said to to be your authentic self. Yeah. Do you ever feel that you need to be someone else around us nah not really no yeah. cool so this is you yes yeah, somewhat <laughs> but it's funny because i do kind of feel that you're a little different when we're not there but i guess we'll never know yeah unless your friends videotape you and then send it to us and then we'll know how you act <laughs> yeah <laughs> See, that's another big difference that your generation there's phones everywhere when we grew up, there was no fun, so we got away with a lot. No, just kidding. No. <laughs> but we kind of did. <laughs> I mean, you had CCTV cameras. Yeah, but they're all grainy. Look at the high def ones now. Nah, they're still grainy. It'll be like, well, was it me? That doesn't look like me. And now it's like, that's 4K right there. You got caught in 4K. <laughs> all right, but no, I just wanted, um, I just wanted to say thank you though. Uh, thank you for coming on the episode. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Hopefully you had fun because, yeah, I feel that now that you're getting older, you know, we're having less and less time with you. But, um, yeah, but I don't kind of want to go back to one of the things that the reasons that I do the things for, like with you, you know, like I know, like I always try to do, like I find activities for you and, and kind of try to do stuff together. And one of the reasons, because when I was younger, I remember that that was always like one of the fun things. It's like, uh, you know, when, when my dad was like there for my soccer game, like I remember like those memories was so cherishable for him being there. You know, I think the, um, you know, when he was there, it made a difference. I kind of felt uh, ha more happier and more accomplished and things like that. And uh, unfortunately, you know, he wasn't always there because of work or for whatever reason, but I do remember the times that he was there and those memories actually do sit um, and does have a special place in my heart. So that was one of the things that I wanted to do differently with you is really try to be there for you all the time. You know, so I actually took a different approach and even like for school, like for anything, I try to take time off from work and try to be there. Um, 
And I just wanted to ask you, like, how how important is that for you for me to be there? I mean, I think it's important. I, like, I understand if you don't, like, if you can't arrive to, like, some stuff, but I still, like, appreciate it or not cherish it when you do, like, come to, like, the stuff, like, I do, you know? So, like, but, but again, I still understand if you can't come because of, like, work or, like, something else that like randomly come up but i still cherish the memories where you do like show up and like maybe like interact with me and stuff yeah yeah and i think that's the other thing too that shows like your maturity and the difference of of your upbringing because for you to even like understand that i think that's very mature of you so that's cool what do you what do you what would you say is one of your most cherished memories that you have uh when i have showed up for you and i was there what's one of the cherished memories that you have See, I don't know, cause like, I don't have that good of a memory. <laughs> so nothing we did has been memorable. God, it's <laughs> well, actually, I remember, I remember before like COVID, we would do like laser tag. Uh, yeah, those are still some like good memories, you know. Just like you and me hanging out, playing laser tag. It was fun. I re- yeah those were cool because um i remember during that time uh uh mom was actually working she she would work weekends she would work every sunday and i remember we created that 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 same for us because since mom was working all day it didn't sorry some moms was working all day it was just me and you so we coined it father and son day <laughs> trademark pending don't take that much <laughs> but yeah so that's cool though so going later tell you that was fun i remember yeah we would go to uh this spot i think it, well we went to different ones but the one that we would go a lot to was the one in livermore i can't remember the name of the place but it was like a dinosaur thing but they had a laser tag there uh, yeah. hey do you remember the uh go-karts at at the place or like the, uh it was a different place but it was kind of in the area yeah i, rem- I remember that too <laughs> that was super fun yeah and i remember those those were cool because um it was one of the things that i always tried to like teach you is like kind of like that's why it's interesting that you say that you don't like to fail because there's times where <clears throat> when you challenge me and we, you know, we, we play or whatever, whatever we're doing, you, you challenge me. Like, you know, I show you that I could still beat you. Right. I, I never let you win. So the times you have won, you, you, you won. Right. So I remember we would uh, go to the go-kart and there was uh there, you were still younger, so you couldn't ride the big one. So you, uh, you had to wear, you had to use a smaller one, but I would have the, the, the adult one. So it was there just way faster. But I always remember like kind of like just just kind of like tagging and just kind of like kind of going back and forth. Like those were like super fun. I do remember that. And then finally you're able to ride the big ones. And then the asshole and we really went like went at it with the races. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I won those. I'm pretty sure you didn't. I'm pretty sure I could look up the emails to <laughs> that shows the time. <laughs> and, but we got to find another one to try to hit them up. Yeah. I miss that place. Yeah, we had to go back though. That was a cool place. Yeah, cool place. I know. So, like, I know that we do like a lot of activities. You know, like try to be active and things like that. Um, you know, besides the the laser tag, what's an, what's another like activity that you like to that 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 you like to do together? Like uh, me and you, or like yeah. me and you specifically? Yeah, I think we've had some good adventures. Um, I'd say anything like no I remember we would play like Mortal Kombat sometimes and since I'm just that guy the game I'd, I would never single around you know <laughs> I remember those fatalities <laughs> dude I remember and it's funny because Mortal Kombat I remember playing that with, with, with my brother so I remember like when we were younger we would play that and it the graphics were just completely different. But um I remember when the internet barely started coming out, we got like the cheat code. So we were able to find out all like the fatalities and stuff. And then we would like print them out and then actually try them and we pretty much did every single character which was pretty cool. <laughs> so I remember when that game came out and we bought it, we we're like, Oh, I get to play that with my son. Like it was kinda like a full circle like type moment. Yeah. Did you win or did he win? Uh, of course I would win, you know, like champion. <laughs> now I think for the most part, like he was older than me, you know, he was like seven years older. So 
you know, he had a little bit more experience. So I see he would win sometimes. But and another question I wanted to ask you is what is I know that there's been many, but what was like one of the biggest lessons that stuck in your head that that I gave you? Like I said, I don't have that good of a memory. <laughs> not not because I didn't care, but like no, I don't remember. Um, yeah, I can't think of a word. Yeah, that's cool. But that's cool. but um, so I remember. So let me tell you a little bit of history of myself. So growing up, like I said, um, with my dad, like like I remember just one of the lessons that he told me was always just keep trying, you know. And I think one of the biggest things that that stuck to me was like, always keep trying, right? If you fail, then you got to keep going. And it came from soccer, actually, because I remember like we would always come like second, like in that tournament, like we were like, you know, we were there. And then like in the tournament, we always come in second. We never won the championship, unfortunately. And it's funny that I met um, that I'm bringing this up because I remember he was always like next season, next season, right? Now, unfortunately, we never got it. <laughs> you know, like, no, yeah, we didn't, we didn't get it with, the, with that team. But that was one of the lessons that he always like, put into my head was to keep trying so that's why with you it's like that's why we mom and I always say that like always push yourself you know so it's not just keep trying but also push yourself because we always want something better for our kids right so that's why we're trying to get you to a higher level than what we are yeah hey, you you're, you said you said like that's like a lesson your dad taught you that got me that got me wondering what were some like Cherish memories you had with your dad and like I'm sure soccer was like one of them and how he told you to keep trying but yeah could there be like anything else you cherish from him I think the 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 thing that I cherish the most is it's the time we spent um you know how my dad had, like he you know, he was he was there as much as he could you know he worked at night and things like that so the times that I cherish with him is the time we spent together and that's why I feel since that's what I cherish the most because he didn't, you know, he wasn't always there, but when he, when he was there and he was able to be there, he was, but those moments, and it's crazy because it's kind of like you were saying, like, it's not one specific thing. There's a lot of like little things that kind of come to mind. So I remember he, there's one time that we were just hanging out in our backyard, just talking, you know? So like, those are like the little memories and like, yeah, he, he, and he would show up to my soccer game. So I feel like that's another one. Like he was always there, like, supporting and things like that as um at the soccer games and and things like that so like i feel that that's what i cherish the most is the spending the time with him and out of everything that's what i got the most out of him so that's why with you that's why i try to do that with you try to spend that time with him because since i cherish that with him and you know unfortunately he did pass and i can't continue that like i want to continue that with you now and i think that's that's why I kind of always try to find things to do with you because I cherish that with my dad. So I wanted to give that to you. And I feel that that's what he passed on to me to give to you. Yeah. Yeah. I find that sweet how like you, you took like, took stuff from your, your dad or yeah, I'll just say that you took like stuff that your dad did and you implemented into your parenting style with me. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask, is there like anything else you're, parents did that you impl implemented the uh your parenting st style with me i think the one that stuck out the most is regardless of what's happening regardless of what, what's going on like it you know you it's all about love you know do things with love so you know we always try to like if you're gonna do something do it with love do it with passion do it because you want to so i think for me personally from what i remember growing up it was always like do it you know what makes you happy and and i think part of it is like i wish i would have like took it more like too hard or more serious at that time um because i felt that it was like oh yeah do what i do how that makes you happy okay but if you really dive into it really think about that message it really does resonate with you at, and with me now more than it did back then so really just doing things because it makes you happy and it, i feel it's one of the big things that i learned from from them you know and just continue that because if you do continue doing things that make you happy, you're, you're going to be, the happiness will never end. And why not be happy all the time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you definitely did put that into your brain style with me because like, there's a lot of stuff uh, you do that's not like, honestly, it's, 
it's just like full of love, you know, like hanging with family and stuff, just like playing games with each other, hanging out with each other in general. I feel like that's like done with love, you know? Nice, nice. I appreciate that. No, but um, but I just want to, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and close it out because I feel that this is a good, good time to stop. I feel that we had some really good conversations. We're going to continue this later on today. Um, but overall, I appreciate you coming onto the show. Thank you for giving me a little bit insight into uh, into multiple things about myself, about my parenting, about life, and also about what you think. So thank you very much. Did you want to say anything to our listeners? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> actually no bye I meant. but <laughs> sounds good well thank you for tuning into our show we appreciate each and every one of you until next time remember love is an endless adventure so cherish your connections and keep those conversations flowing mm-hmm.